Sometimes he wants to hit you. He's being very aggressive. He uses all types of epithets and very offensive language. I don't want to hear that at all. I think that we are all frightened. The man these neighbors are afraid of? Shut the up! Meet Daniel Hester, whom neighbors say has been terrorizing a two-block area of Ladera Heights for years. He shakes the doors. He used the profanity. It's unbelievable. Allison Bragg has lived here for 16 years and loves the neighborhood where she says she once felt safe. I put a bat in my car if I get attacked. You keep a bat in your car. Right. Because you're that afraid of this guy. Right. Allison recalls one day when Daniel was having a, quote, episode outside her car, scaring the senior so much she hid. I saw him, and then I went down like this. You don't know if, if he's going to attack you? Doris Rivera is Allison's neighbor and has had her share of encounters with a 29-year-old, who she says many times has trapped her inside her apartment. Sometimes I cannot open the door to get out of the building. You can't come out of your own apartment. He blocks the door. Yes. So you cannot leave or enter. No one seems to know where Hester came from or what his issues are. In addition to talking to himself, most of what he says all of is not suitable for television. Is that? Well, it's not suitable for listening to, let alone television. Very loud, 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, all day, all night. I can sleep. There are also the drugs, which neighbors say he often talks about. I'm not dealing with my meth. I need more time. I'm not dealing with my meth. There are also the incidents where neighbors say he peeks into their windows. Rafiq, the maintenance manager, has seen it too. A lot of people are scared. Uh, I have one of the tenants moved out because of that. An she old lady. moved away? Yes. She moved because of that. On the block, everyone seems to have a Daniel story, and they only get worse. He's exposed himself in front of my school. I'm afraid to send the kids outside to play. Swarna D. Alwis runs a pre-K on the block where Daniel hangs out. When we call, police, they come, take him. A couple of days later, he's back again saying, doing the same thing. A neighbor recording the time Daniel was exposing himself as children walked by, even flashing police officers. If you go take me to jail, take me to jail. The stories are endless. The time neighbors say Daniel angrily busted a pipe and flooded the front of a building. The countless times he's been seen jumping over security gates, walking into traffic, and harassing those who live here. He's trying to hit me right now. The problem is when you ask him to leave, he starts saying, I'm, I live here, and he doesn't live here. And then there are the times neighbors found him on their property, passed out in his own vomit. Drug paraphernalia nearby, they say. It would be one of many times they called 911 for help. He was taken away, paramedics in an ambulance, um, less than 48 hours, back in front of the property's doorsteps, literally in front to just, um, you know, talking to himself and, and severely needing help. Chris Flight manages a nearby property where Daniel apparently thinks he also lives. He doesn't. Chris, one of many reaching out to the city for help, too many times to count. Real help for both neighbors and for Daniel never comes. Coming. We reached out to council member Tracy Park, who represents this area. It took us three tries, but eventually a spokeswoman told us the council member would not be available for an interview, but that she would send us a written statement. That was back in July. No statement was ever received. It kind of shows how, how broken the system is in certain ways, and I think there needs to be a lot of improvement. Do you feel the city has let you down? Of course they did. But what else can I do about it? Court papers show that several years ago, Daniel was arrested for domestic violence. 
But he violated a court order and a judge ordered him into a mental health diversion program to seek help. But reportedly Daniel didn't comply so the order was rescinded. The court giving Daniel another chance to seek help earlier this year. But again, that order wasn't complied with. An arrest warrant was issued with police finding Daniel on the block in Ladera Heights. It was also there that residents fed up with no response from the city had him served with a restraining order. They now hope peace will return to their neighborhood so kids can play outside again and Allison can feel safe and put her bat away. Everyone also hopes that Daniel gets the help he needs. I feel sorry people like this on the street in a country like this. He needs help. He needs help, but he needs professional help. Daniel Hester was in court last month on that domestic violence issue, but because there was doubts about his mental competency, he was ordered into a mental health program for at least six months. As of this week, he remains there. In Ladera Heights, Gigi Graciette.